Hi, I'm Cam Carmen, and welcome to Dine and Dish, where we explore the fabulous eateries of Detroit and beyond, where regular viewers come together to dish about their favorite restaurants. So this is how it works. Every week we have three guests, each recommends their favorite spot, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. Once again, we are at the incredible Chartreuse Kitchen and Cocktails, located in marvelous Midtown Detroit. And by the way, it was named the Detroit Free Press Restaurant of the Year for 2016. On to this week's show, account executive Gabriel Gagnon says Forest in Birmingham is a feast for foodies with a European influence. This buzzy bistro is her favorite high-end hotspot. Legal assistant Jennifer Katinsky has Havana-style eats on her mind when she visits downtown Detroit, as Vicente's Cuban cuisine serves up authentic classics with plenty of Cuban soul. And up first, TV director and producer Alex Kimbrough says the perfect blend of locally sourced food and a warm, inviting atmosphere make a road trip to visit the Wooden Spoon in Brighton worth the drive. We don't tie ourselves into any cuisine. We do Indian, we do Mexican, we do Italian, French, American. When you pigeonhole yourself to a particular food group, you're kind of held to that. We're not held to that by any means. And so that's what I, I try to use this as a springboard for the culinary staff here to grow. The customer comes here for a unique experience. We are going to be just a little bit different than everybody else. We do that on purpose. We're a family and we'd like to take that family attitude and give it to the customer and make the customer feel like part of our family. New customers, existing customers, they come in here, I feel like they're coming into my home. You can come in on a Monday and go look into our deli. You can come back a couple days later and there'll be different salads and different entrees for people to take out. We not only have our regulars, but we have a lot of people that are just passing through and they're told to come to the Wooden Spoon. We're referred and once people find their way, they come back. So Alex, at the Wooden Spoon, art of food is their passion. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I have never been to the place before, but I've had their food. One of the projects I have done, uh, the Wooden Spoon was the caterer. Mm -hmm. And I just thought their food was magnificent. So I said, you know what, we have an opportunity to go there. So I went there with my wife. Um, we drove all the way out to Brighton. And from the, the exterior, I thought, well, this, this is really a diner. I, I didn't know. But when I got inside, it was very quaint. It was, it was kind of rustic in its, mm -hmm. its appearance. Um, and I could smell the food. The, the waff of food came at us. I said, this stuff is really, really good. So we sat down. And I had, I, now I must preface this, because I'm a person of size, um, I'm looking for something that, you know, can, can deal with healthy choices, so it's mm -hmm. always my thing to find something healthy. So when I went to the Wooden Spoon, I picked the uh, all-natural chicken. Aha. Uh -huh. And it was plentiful. It was tasty. I started off with a little Caesar salad because I have to have a little bit of something. It was really, really good, but the chicken was magnificent. And, and it was very filling, which I thought was something that was very good for me to have. Um, my wife liked the little mason jars they give you for, bottle, for, for water. Mm -hmm. She just mm -hmm. loved the mason jars, and I had to check her purse to make sure she was <laughs> home. I, I enjoyed that meal so much that I will make that trek to Brighton again mm -hmm. for the wooden spoon. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Um, and sure. hopefully if I'm off my diet one day, I can have some of the other things that go on with it. <laughs> and Jennifer, what did you think of the wooden spoon? We had a wonderful experience there. We had gone on a weekday night around 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. The service was wonderful. The staff was delightful. The menu was very impressive. There was a lot of different options. Uh, I would definitely suggest starting it off with their mushroom and brie soup oh, so with the good. homemade oh. croutons. It was oh, delicious. So good. I didn't get that. Oh, yeah, it's really, <laughs> really. We need to go back. It's, yeah. It was oh. so good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we ended up uh, doing five tapas instead of an entree, which ended up being more than enough. My personal favorite was the smoked walleye spread and the warm goat cheese croquette. Oh. <laughs> and then my guests really liked the pan-seared scallops. Um, but I think I was most impressed with the lunch menu and the catering. So mm -hmm. I would definitely go back for that. That deli case is huge. Oh and that you can, there's anything you can ever imagine in there. And it's all fresh mm -hmm. and wonderful. Gabrielle, what did you think of it? Loved it. I cannot wait to go back again. Um, we went at lunchtime and um, did sandwiches, but had the soup, which mm -hmm. was to die for. Nice 
wine selection, great sandwiches. I had the fish sandwich, sandwich, but it was like um, smoked salmon and avocado and cheese and um, a spread on that was amazing. Um, we did dessert as well. We did the carrot cake, which was to die for. And the service, I have to give a major shout out to our waitress, Carrie, was phenomenal. That added to the restaurant were the people that worked there. There mm -hmm. were people in and out um, ordering stuff from behind the deli, mm -hmm. ordering coffee, gr having the coffee ground. It felt like you were in someone's house, really. On top of being amazing food, um, the atmosphere, and I think the people that work there, um, and the people that were there. Our waitress, Carrie, couldn't say enough great things about the restaurant. She sold it on top of just the food itself. So. It's very unassuming on the outside. Right. You would never know. No, very homey really on the would. inside. Yes. But it was yeah. very, very nice and warm and, and friendly. So, yes, I know I'm going back. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. I my can't wife's wait. going to drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, the wooden spoon is your pick, Alex. Sum it up for us. Okay. The food is to die for. The atmosphere is very friendly. Uh, it's very family oriented. You have a variety of different choices. I highly recommend it. And it is a wonderful, wonderful cuisine for any time of day, lunchtime or dinner. Wonderful. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer? I would say I would definitely go back for lunch. I thought their lunch menu was great. The sandwiches looked awesome. Oh. And Gabrielle, what did you think? I loved it. I, I can't say enough good things about it. It was a, it was a great choice. Um, I thought the atmosphere was, you know, a, a little more easygoing than the elegance of the food, really, mm -hmm. for the, the type of place that it was. And you can visit the Wooden Spoon for yourself. It's located at 675 West Grand River Avenue in Brighton. And they're open Monday through Saturday for lunch and dinner, and reservations are accepted. Their website is woodenspoonmarket.com. Coming up, we are paying homage to Havana as the scents of exotic Cuban dishes and the sounds of salsa music fill the air. We will see what's on the menu at Vicente's next. Cuban culture infuses Detroit's dining scene with an inconspicuous eatery called Vicente's, located on Library Street in the heart of downtown. Jennifer Katinsky says the lively, invigorating atmosphere and the authentic recipes keep her coming back for more. After 12 years, we are very happy here in Detroit. We believe in Detroit. We want to continue in Detroit. The selection here basically is a Cuban mixed with a touch of Spanish food. We try to make the entire package, you know, if you want to go out for dinner and after that you want to go down somewhere, no, you have everything here. You have an amazing bar, you got the dance, salsa instructor, summertime we have a beautiful patio. That means you don't have to go to the place, you have everything here. It's a fun place, it's colorful, it's bright and happy place. That's what I want to give it to the customer. A great Cuban experience, a good food. Salud. Jennifer, what made you choose Vicente's? There are so many new and great restaurants opening up in Detroit, but Vicente's is a staple. They've been thriving for the last 11 years, and even through the ups and downs that Detroit has gone through. Mm -hmm. They serve a, an amazing traditional Cuban cuisine with a Spanish flair. I think their service is excellent. They're so friendly and inviting. I always feel like they're having as much fun as you are For while sure. they're providing this excellent mm -hmm. service. What did you have? Let's see. We, well, there are some dishes that I must get every time I go, such as calamari. But I do like to explore the menu and try new things. So I would suggest, which I did have this time, was uh, the paella. Oh, it's, so good. <laughs> yes. It is an assortment of seafood, Spanish sausage, and or vegetables, and a Spanish saffron rice, and they bake it all together. It takes about 40 minutes, but it's oh, definitely yeah. worth the wait. Mm -hmm. You need to know that ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hungry. Uh -huh. And Alex, you went to Vicente's? I did. I'd never been there before, mm -hmm. uh, but I've seen those blue lights in front mm -hmm. of the building. So mm -hmm. I went there in the evening, mm -hmm. um, and I had, I'm going to try to get this right, the pollo con carmanaras. Very good! <laughs> <laughs> Which is basically chicken and shrimp. So I'm try, trying to stay in the healthy mode that I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but I started off with some lobster bisque, because mm -hmm. I said, if I'm going to be here, Might let as well me be just, here. Just, just go on out. 
that mm-hmm. bisque, I could have dove into it and bathed in the stuff. It was mm-hmm. great. It mm-hmm. was smooth. It was flavorful. And then I ordered, you know, the the, uh, the chicken and shrimp. And it was just, again, a good filling meal. There's a lot of flavor in that in the cuisine that we had there. With, we had some rice to go along with it. Um, and I loved the music. There was right. this band playing the whole night. They were incredible. You know, and I heard this dancing. I will not do that. Um, <laughs> they they do give lessons. Yeah, they I, I, lessons. Yes, they do. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I won't see that uh, but the music was great to listen to, but it was a wonderful atmosphere. I didn't even know that place really existed. My wife mm-hmm. loved it. It, it's sort of like this jewel, and they've been there forever. Mm-hmm. You know, the, mm-hmm. the manager came by and spoke to us, and she said, yes, we've been here all the time, and where have you been? It's like, you know, hiding out my house. <laughs> but the food was great. I highly recommend it for everyone. Um, again, I'm looking for healthy options. Mm-hmm. Chicken and shrimp were great. Uh, it wasn't heavy, but it was filling, and I thought it was a magnificent meal, and then I ended up with a very incredibly decadent chocolate cake dessert. So again, oh, you know, I'm trying huh. to stay there for the meal, Just but with the dessert, taste. Well, it, mm-hmm. well, it wasn't little, but when I tried to go for the dessert portion, I, I had to try to experience it all. So I had that and I had some wine to go Of course. Of so, mm-hmm. course. Good. I liked it. Gabriel, what were your thoughts? I loved it. I had never heard of it, so I was excited to try it. Um, and same thing, in that area, which is a, a new area, it's up and coming, mm-hmm. um, and then this little gem stuck in it. Mm-hmm. Just like you said, Alex, there's these Lights the that lights. are so inviting. <laughs> Not only that, um, just what you would want were um, men outside smoking cigars, which is what you would expect. Typical Havana, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And um, then when you walk in, it just looks like you are in a hall, like a dance hall, and there's tables up. And we were there during the day, but there were a couple parties going on, and it was very, yeah, it was mm-hmm. lively. People were dancing in their seats. They had the old style microphone. I mean, it looked like what you would expect for a Cuban restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't really sure what Cuban food was, you know, going to entail. But the only thing I knew of was paella. I think mm-hmm. from Seinfeld. So I got to see <laughs> paella. I had the paella. It was amazing. It's good it, paella. It was so good. I mm-hmm. took my daughter and, you know, coffee connoisseur at the age of mm. sixteen. Right. The Cuban coffee <laughs> is phenomenal. Yes. Um, that's a dessert in itself, but I did have dessert as Thank well. Thank you. What did yeah. you have for dessert? Um, they had a caramel custard oh. that was incredible. Yeah, that was a meal in itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. It was. It was really good. I mm-hmm. loved it. The atmosphere and the food were amazing. Yeah. So Vicente's Jennifer, it was your pick. Sum it up for us. I would say they have a wonderful energy every time you go, whether you're going there for dinner or for salsa dancing on Friday or Saturday night. They also do jazz, I believe, Wednesdays and Thursdays. But one thing that we can't forget to mention is their sangria. Oh, yes. They, we normally order a pitcher when we go. A oh. pitcher? Oh, yeah. yeah. A pitcher per person. Yes. A pitcher per person. No, we share. <laughs> and uh, normally we do the red and white, but upon suggestion of our server, this time they do a combination, 50-50 mix of white and red combined, and it was perfect. I would definitely get it again. Oh, I miss that. <laughs> and uh, for dessert, I didn't have one of their traditional desserts, but they, another table was getting these shots of... Liquor 43 and chocolate oh, shot glasses. Oh, that's my favorite. favorite. <laughs> so our waitress saw us sign it up, and she brought it over to us, and that was a oh, perfect so ending to the yeah. meal. All right, Alex, sum it up for us. Um, it is a place that is fun, mm-hmm. and it is a place where if you want a really good time, good food is a wonderful date place. Mm-hmm. Not that I'm doing anything like that, but <laughs> it is a, it is a good date night place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's right there in the heart of what's going on in Midtown Detroit. Mm-hmm. If you want a wonderful cuisine, something that's a little bit different, and yet it isn't because they have wonderful different things on the menu as well, I highly recommend it. it it's, it's a great atmosphere. Um, and then with, with the music and, and the food, I highly recommend it, that you go to Vicente's Cuban cuisine. cuisine. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And learn how to pronounce the things on the menu. <laughs> it's hard. And Gabrielle, what are your thoughts? I loved it. I can't wait to go back to this one either. Um, I think it's an experience. While it's really good food, it's different, um, and it's it's festive. It, it has a, a great atmosphere that's, you know, fun on top of great food. So mm-hmm. I loved it. And if you're looking for hearty Cuban classics, you'll find Vicente's mm-hmm. located at 1250 Library Street in Detroit. They're open seven days a week for lunch and dinner with salsa dancing on Friday and Saturday nights. Their website is vicentesdetroit.com. 
And when we come back, uncorking the mysteries of ordering wine with your wonderful meal, the wine counselor Michael Schaefer is here to help you pick like a pro. Thanks for coming this evening, ladies and gentlemen. What we're going to talk about now is we're going to talk about how to order wine off of a wine list. It's amazing how many, many people are very, very intimidated when they're presented with a wine list. I've worked with C-level folks that run multi-million dollar corporations and they look and they oh, I don't know, what do I do with the list here? Here, here, you know what? Here, why don't you look at it? You know, people, that they, they get, they just get nervous and there's really no reason. When you're in a restaurant, what you wanna do is, you wanna take a look at the list and you wanna have a budget in mind. You know, it, it's, that's, it's perfectly acceptable. How much you you want to spend that that evening? How many bottles are you going to have, or at least how many bottles you're going to start out having? You know, we, we need to start out with some sort of a, a level. And what I don't understand is people don't want to ask. Well, I don't, I don't want to ask for help because you know I might look like it. The first thing I do is I say if there, if there is a sommelier in the house. I ask, hey, how you doing? It's their job. This is their baby. This is what they, their pride and joy. Ask for help. What's tasting good tonight? Ask the questions and, for instance, another great way to learn is if they have the wine by the glass, ask for a taste. Wow, what a concept. If they don't give you a taste, thank you very much. It's been a nice evening. Goodbye. Because they will, they're happy to give you a taste. That way you know what it's like. One thing I've learned is, is that part of it is Americans in particular are a little bit intimidated because some of the, the names are foreign. Don't be afraid, it's okay. That's the way we learn. Go through in terms of what you're looking for in price, set your budget, kind of stick with it and have fun. Try something new and different. Again, thanks for coming. Cheers. 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 And for more information about the wine counselor, Michael Schaefer, you can log on to his website, winecounselor.net. Just ahead, we're heading back to the table for a trip to the forest where creative cuisine meets neighborhood hideaway. A visit to bustling Birmingham is next. Nestled amidst the bouncy, bright nightlife of Birmingham, it's forest. Gabriel Gagnon's pick for an upscale atmosphere and a globally influenced menu. We operate in a very strict manner. We expect nothing but the highest quality from our employees. And I think we attract employees that want to work hard. And it shows in our food. We're just trying to be the best we can and show Birmingham and Detroit that we're more than just a Midwestern state. We can compete with the larger cities. We have actually a high following of people who come maybe two or three times a week. This is like their family outing or a mom and dad trying to get away from the kids twice a week, you know. We're kind of pushed back into a little of a neighborhood, so we got all the neighborhood people that just walk from their house straight on through. We want a very elegant feeling, we want high-end feeling when it comes to the food. We want you to feel comfortable coming any day of the week, wearing whatever you want. Just come in and enjoy great food. It's savvy, but not stuffy. Gabriel, tell us why you picked Forest. Well, it is tucked away in um you know, not the obvious areas of Birmingham. Mm -hmm. And I love that about it the most, I think, where all the other places are very obvious and right out there. Um, but I think it's, while it's cool and modern, I think what's really obvious about it is that it's um, intimate and I think romantic. Mm -hmm. um, the food, well, I think when you first look at the menu, sort of intimidating, but it's also pretty simple. And I, I think the food is just phenomenal. There's a lot of really cool places in Birmingham, but I think this one's pretty special. It's also one of those restaurants that's been revamped yes. in the last couple of years. Right, New right. Owner. And, yeah, and I think even better than it was before. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's sort of got that restaurateur feel, the guy that mm -hmm. runs it. Yeah, so, Sammy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And it, there's really not much of that and left. What did so, you have to eat? I had the Bronzino, and it mm -hmm. was to die for. It had a, a lot of flavor, which sometimes 
Franzino kind of misses that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's served with a, a quinoa with pomegranate in it. Just kind of oh adds it. Mm -hmm. It's really good. It's really good. I also had the artichokes, which w is sort of unusual. Mm -hmm. Also had the French fries. <laughs> really good French fries. You gotta have the fries. Big. Yeah, yeah, really good. Yeah. The wine, I you know sometimes it's best just to kind of let them select. Mm -hmm. um, the wine was mm -hmm. amazing. They have a huge wine list, mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. really good. Um, and then of course it did not have dessert, but they served the best chocolate cookie ever oh. with their espresso. <laughs> So that was dessert enough, but um, I, I, I think it's all that. Really great mm -hmm. food mm -hmm. and a nice, intimate, um, not intimidating atmosphere. Right. Mm -hmm. Alex, what do you think about Forrest? I, I wasn't sure what to say about it when I first got there. Mm -hmm. Because it was, you know, it's so very upscale-ish yeah. when, when yeah. you get mm -hmm. in. But, mm -hmm. but the food, though, I had, in, in keeping with the healthy, uh -huh. I ordered some salmon. It had to be some of the best salmon I've ever had in my really? life. Really? Yeah, awesome. Because the chef recommended that you have it medium. So it was medium, it was moist, it was flavorful, it had these little potato things on the side mm -hmm. and she just chopped up. Mm -hmm. And there were these little crunchy bits. I didn't even know what the heck those things were. <laughs> but they crunched nice and, they, and you just blended it all together with a little bit of bits of cream on it. You know, I know it's, it's all on the menu, but it was just wonderful and it blended together. And I had that, plus I had my staple, my Caesar salad to go with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a glass of wine. It was the red wine, not the white wine, because I learned you didn't have to have that. Um, <laughs> but, but then I had, of course, healthy meal, jacked up dessert. So <laughs> I, I had this molasses cake. I didn't know what to think of that, because I, you know, what's a molasses cake? It was tender. It was fluffy, <laughs> and it had this little, this little bar of ice, chocolate ice cream laying next to it, you know, like a body. Right and up your alley. Just, <laughs> cut, oh, well, well, I'm, well, I'm, no, I'm sorry. But it, was, it was really, really good. But you cut into it, and you just mixed it together. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. So the cuisine there was incredible. And again, it was a, a nice little date night type of atmosphere. For sure. mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the lights were really, really dim. You could look in everybody's eyes. Mm -hmm. There was no dancing. Like no. I loved it. It was great. So much so that Mrs. Kimbrough was going to have a birthday party. Oh, oh are we all invited? <laughs> I'm not invited. <laughs> that's, that's a whole different debate and a whole different show. Right. So Jennifer, when you go to a restaurant like Forest, mm -hmm. what does it mean to you? The service is impeccable and the and the everything is set out and laid out for you. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you? I loved all of the natural light that was in there, the open mm -hmm. kitchen, mm -hmm. and just the general ambiance of it. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed with the sommelier, mm -hmm. how they had the diverse and extensive wine list that you were saying. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. awesome. And they really were able to help you find a wine that you might not have normally chosen that mm -hmm. would be really good. Yeah, yeah a lot very of us, good at recommending, for A lot sure. of us get into that habit where we just pick what we know. Right. But with Forrest, they have that sommelier that's just there for you to use and, mm -hmm. and to, mm -hmm. you know. My it's wife like their food. It's me. intimidating, but they make it not so intimidating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought yeah. the menu was concise, but they had enough offerings that some anybody could have found something that they would have enjoyed. Right, right. Yeah. So. It All right. stayed with me for a while. <laughs> the molasses cake. The molasses cake. You got to have molasses. Be all that? over that. No, I, oh, you I was so that. full. Those french fries were oh, huge. Cute. <laughs> cute. The fuck? Had that molasses cute. cake. <laughs> that was deep. We had a lot of wine. <laughs> That'll do too. <laughs> so, Gabrielle, Forrest, sum it up for us. Um, I would have to say it's an elegant, modern neighborhood location. Um, ideal for a date, for sure. Jennifer, how about you? I thought it was a great experience. I'd definitely go back. I just love the downtown Birmingham, so it gets mm -hmm. points just for being there. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, um, right. Yeah, and I did also think great recommendations and really good food. Alex, how about you? If, if you want a relatively different blend of flavors mm -hmm. for your meal, because mm -hmm. uh, that's what I got out of it more than anything else, I highly recommend Forrest because I don't know what the chef does or says or thinks or who he's talking to, but he knows <laughs> how to take this piece and this piece, blend them together, and you have such a flavorful meal. That's the part that I like the mm -hmm. best. Plus the atmosphere was wonderful, mm -hmm. and the service was great too. And if you'd like to try Forest, it's at 735 Forest Avenue in Birmingham, and they are open for dinner Monday through Saturday with brunch served on Saturday. Reservations are recommended, and their website is forestbirmingham.com. 
And I'd like to thank my guests on this week's show, Alex Kimbrough, who says the wooden spoon in Brighton deserves high marks for its unmatched, uncommon menu with a knack for keeping it local. Jennifer Katinsky, who says when your taste buds crave Cuban, head to Vicente's in Detroit to savor the flavor of their sophisticated yet sassy recipes <laughs> steeped in their country's tradition. And Gabrielle Gagnon, whose pick forest in Birmingham is an enchanting eatery its sleek and contemporary dishes make for a sophisticated yet memorable meal, while the nightlife provides a kick of cool. And we'd like to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been dishing about. So find us on Facebook and check us out at dineanddishmish.com. You'll also find links to the featured restaurants and wonderful wine tips from the wine counselor, Michael Schaefer. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Dine and Dish. Until then, I'm Cam Carmen, and thanks for joining us. Great.